360 takes to the seas once again with the second generation of their Harpoon Naval Warfare simulation with all the sights and sounds of the real McCoy. As you can see, there certainly is some impressive photography at work here. Too bad it's in the opening credits. Actually, it's a good thing the credits aren't at the end of the game because no one would see them if they were. Too true. This game belongs on a CD. Just once, I'd like to see one of these warfare games show some action. Hey guys, you've got the footage, and if a system can play this game at all, it can certainly handle a few AVIs. Once you've experienced those awesome graphics, only to be disappointed later on, you get to work your way through the setup options. This is where Harpoon 2 excels. Sure, you get your usual pick-and-choose scenario and skill level routine, but 360 is also following the customization trend by providing the tools that allow you to create and edit your own missions. And let's not forget a feature of great importance. You can also label each of your windows to suit your needs. Among the resources available for contact evaluation is a complete database of all subs, ships, planes, bases, and weapons. A little more intelligent and creative thought is needed to efficiently work fresh contacts. You may not have a firm identification of a newly acquired contact, but its electronic emissions may give a clue as to whether it should be examined closely. And just to keep it interesting, friendly and sometimes outright unknown contacts drift in and out of the picture. Since you'll have a lot of traffic and activity to monitor, identification by color recognition reduces eye strain and reaction time enough to make a difference. These palettes can also create some custom colors. Oh boy, subliminal advertising. We're cooking now. Navigation is a snap. Point and click to guide the way with each click creating a waypoint. And they've got that flexible thing working here too as you can change speed as well as direction. Merely click on the waypoint where you want to make the change, set the new speed, and the asset will change speed when it reaches that waypoint. I was really impressed by the navigation model. You can draw a direct line to your destination, and if the route goes over land, the navigator will automatically choose the most direct course around it. And if you should require a sudden change in course, merely click on the desired waypoint and drag it to your preferred location. The change is instantaneous. Yeah, and it doesn't take long either. There are no limits to your navigational abilities. If your ship has to cover a wide area, you can plot a wide sweeping course and forget about it. Evaluating a distant contact is more of an art than a science. Sometimes you just have to take the information you're given and make an educated guess. But after a while, you'll be able to smell a skunk a mile away, or several miles away as the case may be. In combat, you're treated to a barrage of audio and video feedback. But still, all these short little video outtakes. If you're going to use a video routine, use it right and let me have a separate window to view it in progress as I monitor other actions. That way, I can view my handiwork over and over and... Hey, got a little carried away with the map titles, didn't you? Never! This is Sierra Tango Alpha. New contact spotted. Over. In the middle of combat, things can get pretty hectic. And you want to know what's really annoying? Oh... I don't know, a meat cleaver upside the head, maybe? No, but you're close. This is annoying. That's annoying? No, not that. Look. Ooh, that's a big Twinkie. Your mouse must have been clicking like a card in a bicycle wheel. But as with any game I take on, I was the victor and the good guys came out on top, as my post-mission evaluation clearly demonstrates. Gee, does that include this one, too? <clears throat>